is your major, what are your major east and west arterials. So going north and south, anytime the train comes by, you're going you're gonna to have congestion going north, north and south off of, off of university. And off of um, Snelling and University, they call it a target-rich environment. And I was really resentful that they call it a target-rich environment because you know who the targets are? They're you. They're the cyclists. That's, you, that's who the targets are. And so instead of looking at, at, at a safety issue for what it is, they call it a target-rich environment. Uh, then in the winter, when people are splashing stuff, you know, they don't take away the parked cars. So in the winter, when the cars are driving by and the buses are coming by, they're going to splash stuff. If you're on the sidewalk, you're going you're gonna to get splashed. Think about it. And so I'm beginning to think, now instead of having a compromise system that costs that much, now they're saying $1 billion for 11 miles of track, okay, 11 miles. Typical cost overruns for a project like that is 40%. Okay, so now you're at 1.4 billion. Then they are going to have to pay off a couple of lawsuits, one for U of M and one for NPR, and U of M has a second lawsuit, so I don't know whether there's, there's any money involved there. And they got to pay off business loss mitigation. There were 1,200 businesses when we got started. Now there's, there's about 1,000. A, a so some of them have left already, gone out. So you got to pay business loss mitigation. Now, how much does each business lose? We don't know. Could it be a quarter million? Could it be 100,000? Could it be a million? So you start adding that up for one year, two years, three years, four years. Now you're adding up real money. Then we got to build also parking parking lots, big, uh, big parking, we call them parking ramps, and we knew that one of them would cost at least a million. And then we got to build extra stations, you know. Then you start adding it all up. All of a sudden, you might be really close to $2 billion. Now, if we're going to spend $2 billion, shouldn't we spend it on a brand new system that is not compromising an existing one? You know, when you have a system that you that is already very congested and we're going to compromise it some more, that I don't see as a good decision. Now, if we go on to another route and, and pick maybe you know above ground or below ground, now all of a sudden it becomes a whole new ballgame. Then we get a brand new system that is all different. You, know, you get a whole new dimension to your traffic. Now, that I like. You would never be able to figure out what the bureaucrats would do. The reason why it's such a big deal to them is because Overstar, right, is the head of the Appropriations Committee, and they're thinking that you'll bring home the bacon. And that's the reason why they're thinking of getting the matching funds. But even then, we're competing against 17 to 23 metropolitan areas. They may not get it. Well, it's been being worked on for 30 years, isn't that what you're telling me? Yeah, the mayor keeps saying that he's been worked on for 30 years in my debate. I said, well, if it wasn't right for 30 years, why is it all of a sudden right? <laughs> well, that's my point. You know, to me, Nancy, and I haven't spoken that publicly about it, is like, that is, that's the quick fix. That's the chemotherapy. The, the bad, the cause, we, we need transit. We need ways to get people out of their cars. But to go down University Avenue, the University of Minnesota is stu suing because their instrument's going to be screwed up. The NPR is suing because their their instrument's going to be screwed up. You know, it's like they even didn't even take a sensible route. Why didn't they make it down that that, that rail line? We have a perfect rail line. Right. Mm -hmm. well, north, so north, north, of, north of the university. Yeah, you're going to in invest about $2 billion total. You probably want to build it up. So what is the Central Corridor Partnership? It is a business-led coalition. And our group right now is um, really concerned about getting the money. And uh, what that means is we have large business involved, names you might recognize, like 3M and Wells Fargo. And it's my perspective, I guess, is that we need to get the money. They're getting, they're making money. That's all they're about is making money. So you think everybody should just move out to the suburbs and pave, over, pave over the whole city, huh? Hey, sure. Yeah. Come in once in a while for a ball game. So our job at the Central Corridor Partnership is to get the money.
everyone that's, that's next to a billion dollar transportation project probably feels the way you do. Um, that, but it's not, it's not really your project. Um, it, it's your government. But it's, not, it's not just yours. And, and the FTA, I can tell you, is in the business of building things. They're not in the business of not building transportation projects. And they're certainly not in the business of passing up a half a million dollar involvement, half a billion dollar involvement. I mean, this is like building two twin stadiums. That's how big it is. So, you know, when Larry says it's probably going to get built, well, you know, it's, there's a lot of momentum. The, the economy is down. The Obama administration likes this project. This is high on the list. This is in the top seven on the list of about 100 nationwide projects. It's larger than nearly every project in the nation right now. This is going to cost over $100 million per mile before it's done. Historically, a project of this size constructed over this length of time, um, yeah, it will not be on budget. We have one lawsuit filed in federal court. We have two complaints. The two complaints, as they've said, don't require a response. Yeah, it seems like everybody agrees that the uh, environmental uh, analysis uh, has been inadequate, especially with regard to uh, the environmental justice concerns. Uh, has anybody been following the, the money on this project? Uh, how much money uh, was spent doing that analysis and who received that money? I can't answer that. I don't know if anyone can. Where, where are, you? are you familiar with a company called ACOM? Yeah, AECOM. They're out of California. Uh -huh. Yeah, they're out of California. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do document I received from the Metropolitan Council kind of makes it look like uh, like they're the folks that uh, produced uh, most of this pile of documents that uh, the FDA, FTA, and you all seem to agree uh, is inadequate. I don't know what the cost of this EIS was. I know it's very expensive um, to to do an EIS, and it, there's a lot of um, just the publishing cost of making copies of a document this big and making the the required copies is is actually an expense that is substantial. So I don't know that it costs. I, I don't know the cost to, to to address that. You may. Uh, I, I Acom Engineering Services, right. fifty-one million three hundred thousand dollars. No one's ever that I know of has ever built a billion-dollar transportation project in a heavily populated area that also happens to be a business community. Also has to, happens to have a couple minority communities. Also happens to have a couple low-income and very low-income se segments along it. You know the odds of there not being a lawsuit. <laughs> so the economy is not bad for everyone. I think a failure to respond doesn't mean they're not dealing with it. I think an objective uh, observer could look at this project and say it was planned largely top-down um, without a lot of grassroots involvement in the early phases of the planning. And one might say that resulted in a little bit of a disconnect between the affected community here in the Central Corridor and, and what the government planning agencies were thinking. And, and so we had this kind of miscommunication. But it's not, it's not really your project. Um, it, it's your government. It's not, it's not just yours. And, and the FTA, I can tell you, is in the business of building things. They're not in the business of not building transportation projects. And they're certainly not in the business of passing up a half a million dollar involvement, half a billion dollar involvement. I mean, this is like building two twin stadiums. And this is going to cost over $100 million per mile before it's done. I, I sincerely believe this this uh, this particular project is is beginning to be put together or, or beginning to, to be uh, uh, supplemented with uh, duct tape and, and, and bathing wire. Uh, we're hearing about uh, about people parking in neighborhoods, and uh, your customers or your your your, uh, your employees will be given a parking ticket, and that will allow you to park in that in in the neighborhoods. You're going to displace the parking of all of all, all your neighbors. Uh, a, a serious situation. Uh, uh, there's other talk now about parking ramps. They're going to build parking ramps. 
well, you know, your, your customers can, can park in this parking ramp and, and walk a half block or a block down to your business, but you're going to have to pay $6 uh, to park in that ramp. So the, 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 your, your ability to, to conduct business on university is being impeded by, by, this, by, this, by this particular project. Well, I hate to sound like a wet blanket, but this is not to decrease congestion. It's not to increase speed. It's not to serve the community, because if that's what we wanted to do, we put buses on Lexington and Victoria and Hamlin and all these cross streets where I now have to walk about eight blocks to get to a bus, and I have to walk further than that to get up to the light rail. It's going to tear apart the neighborhood. We did that with Rondo. It's coming again. We're not fortunate enough for the real estate speculators. Now, what do we hear about? We hear growth and development. Is this going to help me? It's not going to make my house bigger. It's not going to develop my backyard. It's going to enormously increase the value of property owned by people along university who want to get rid of the little businesses there and put growth, big condos, very expensive. Can you afford to move in? I don't know. I hope so. But I don't think the growth and development is going to help the people sitting in this room other than the people that are coming in to tell us that it's such a good idea. It smells like the stadium to me. It's taken money to give to people who've already got it, and it's taking life and community and vitality away from us. And I think we ought to just say no. And we're not going to build overpasses and kids who go across. We're going to have children losing legs on this street. This is crazy. It's crazy. My concern is that that, with light rail, is not going to be that safe a place for our kids to even be trying to cross the street, let alone ride bikes and walk down the university. In terms of parking, there will be an elimination of some parking along the avenue where stations, where stations are located. But there is room on University Avenue because it is a very broad thoroughfare for both lines of the light rail, going east and going west, for two, la for two lanes of traffic on both sides as well. So the total of four lanes of traffic that exist there. And for either a parking uh, area on both sides, or you lose parking if you have a left turn lane. There is room on University Avenue because it is a very broad thoroughfare. This is just kind of an effort to depict how the pieces fit together along University. Uh, we did a, a segment from uh, from Prior Avenue headed east, and uh, the the, there comes, the the idea is not to show exactly how everything looks, but to give an idea of how the the pieces fit together. Those of you who might be old enough to remember, the light rail tracks would be basically where the streetcar tracks used to be years ago. There's still room for two lanes of, of traffic uh, and some parking, less parking than there is today because wherever there is a, a station platform or a left turn lane, that takes up the width that would otherwise be used for parking. It doesn't go on much farther than this, but uh, it does give a pretty decent uh, idea of how the various pieces fit together. Make sure, you, in my opinion, make sure you hold their feet to the fire because there was a lot of trees, there was a lot of planting, and there were a lot of things on the avenue that I'd like to see happen. So, you say, I saw the film, I want that. <laughs>